What's up, everybody? Thank you for being here early, because uh, I am one of the few that was super hungover from last night. Uh, and that's part of growing your IP in this space, believe it or not, uh, for me at least. So instead of telling you guys what it means to grow your IP, I'm going to share my story as how I've grown my IP, and maybe that'll help people along the way. So uh, I started in the NFT space in 2017. My four board apes were the first ETH uh, NFT that I ever minted. Got very blessed that day and just stayed on Twitter, found it. The next thing I knew, I was in this club of these amazing people having fun. And I'm just going to focus on the board apes because that's the IP that I've been growing. Uh, in case you can't see it, like I've even gone as far to dye my hair to match the color of my, because the first meetup I ever went to, I was wearing a shirt and everyone said, well, where are you? How do you stand out? You become the character. That was the first thing I chose to do, was to become my ape. So as I grew, I don't really know how to use this slideshow, so that'll work or not. Either way, we'll continue. Um, I've been able to grow this beautiful persona, right? I've started a show called The Boring Show, where Jenkins the Valet was my very first guest. Uh, right here, actually. These were all uh, some of the best memories I've ever had, and I met complete strangers via Twitter. Some of them were actually world-famous artists. Some of them were world-famous DJs. I didn't care nonetheless because they had a striped shirt or they were in the club, so I messaged them. Said, hey, do you want to play for 15 minutes? And we talk ape to ape. I'd have them on the show. Explain who your ape's character is. Play. Don't be who you are as a professional. Allow yourself to be that character. So I've developed my character to be somewhat like me in the most boring style possible. I named my ape after me, Jason the Ape. I started to tell my story through this. And then I realized NFTs actually allowed me to give a sense of freedom as, as an artist to the world that I didn't know I needed to have. So that was the beginning of the journey. And, and it's also something very important to say is if you have zero money, zero dollars, just your hustle, start your own path. No one's going to stop you. Go on Twitter, go on social media, do it every day and post and post and post until someone recognizes you and offers you an opportunity for something like this, where all of a sudden I'm making friends on a daily basis around the world. I haven't slept for a week because all I've done is walk around New York City meeting apes and mutants and NFT people on the street, walking up to strangers and saying, hey, may I go buy you a beer? Let's go hang out. Maybe even not for the children in the room, but it's part of the idea of just walk up to a stranger, allow yourself to be vulnerable, open yourself up, and just say, hey, I'm into NFTs. This is my character. This is what I'm building. And just see where it goes. That's worked beautifully for me every time I've ever done it. So the most important thing at the same time with that is that your character has to have a story, a very deliberate story. And you have to give yourself the opportunity to think about that and play with it in your mind. Every ape that I had on my show, they would get a little confused when I said, please, it's supposed to say lore. I know that's a, it's not a fishing uh, lure, but um, it, it is really important for the development of the NFT character traits uh, to the story. It's crucial to the lore, as, as I was trying to say. And I was actually being interviewed by The Guardian explaining them that I had no idea how life-changing this was going to be on May 1st when I spent that 0 .08 to buy that ape. Now, I would never sell it. I've been offered money. It doesn't matter. The point is not that. It's the opportunity to go further in life than you even thought was possible. So I, years ago, was at a blockchain conference in LA, became friends with this gentleman, and now we have our own NFT project called Boring Stone. We took our apes. We decided to do a generative project. We did it in a mocking style of Rolling Stone, obviously. And I get nervous every time the Bored Apes partner with them and everyone tags me. It makes me really nervous. Uh, but it's also fun because it's part of the brand awareness that people know about. So we took our apes. We did a generative project. We minted out in 36 hours. And it's been a lot of fun. All we do now is airdrop art to our community holders. So another way to build our IP now that we have our platform, is to look for other artists and say, would you like to find an opportunity to use my platform, my VC partner's platform, to present your art to the world? That's been an awesome, awesome opportunity for us. 
Um, one of the other things that I personally love to do in spaces, and I don't know many people that do this, I went in spaces for the first year and I would say anybody who wants to make a variant of my ape is able to. Just DM me and you can do it. And I will mint it and I will sell it and I will give that artist 50% right off the bat, boom. The beauty of that is a lot of people were from all over the world and some of those people, that amount of money was enough to buy them groceries or such for the month, right? So you don't think about that when you're in spaces, it's like, hey, do this. I was having 10, 15 artists from Africa, all over the world, just consistently making me variants. Now, the beauty of that is I could tell people, but now I have this amazing collection of art of my ape that I didn't really have to do much for other than just offer kindness. So that's another way to offer opportunities to others to help you build your own IP, right? Because sometimes we focus too intensely on how do I, how do I, how do I do this? But rather than doing that, you say, how can I help others? And that will open doors for yourself. That's been the key to every part of why I wake up and, and show up here day to day. Like, I promise you, I did not intend to be out drinking last night till five, but I was with a bunch of community members celebrating my best friend's birthday who I had given his ape to. Why wouldn't I cherish that moment? And then why wouldn't I rush over here to have the chills that I have right now to talk about this growth of an IP character? I've been able to go on a chessboard because of uh, some other community members designing they want to do a toy and they did a, a poll. All of a sudden, I'm a king on a chessboard as my ape. Never did I think I'd have an opportunity like that. Someone else is building ape toys of my ape right now, which my community is actually going to get little toy figurines uh, of three different apes based on a future airdrop we do. So it's a continuation of building upon your story, your narrative, day by day by day. So this entire week has been walking up to strangers who are not only apes, not only mutants, any NFT member and saying, hey, season two of The Boring Show is starting soon. I'm gonna start to record the next episode. I did 40 episodes in season one. That was a lot. Next season's gonna be a lot more and it's gonna be a lot more fun. But more so than anything, I think the most important part of this whole NFT world is to develop your NFT into something that's larger than life, more valuable than any amount of money. I've been able to hang out with Denver Broncos players just because of NFTs, where now I have Super Bowl champions calling me on a regular basis, just asking me for thoughts on how do I build their story out. And it's because a lot of professionals forget how important it is to play. I think that's the best part of knowing how to build your IP for your NFT, is allowing yourself the freedom to have fun and play with it. Be silly, enjoy it. Do something out of the wild that's gonna take you to a new place. Do guerrilla marketing in a punny sense, but like the first thing I did was I started the Board Ape Homies Club. So every ape that I knew, if you messaged me, I would take your ape and I would put it on a shirt and I'd send it all over the world. I've done that now I think on every continent in the world, there's at least one of those shirts. Everywhere I go, I'm putting stickers up. We're having jackets made. I have uh, that, that uh, container is actually in London. Some random artist just offered to put my ape in London and now it's at this park. That's part of the fun is just offering people opportunities to run with it and see where it goes. Boring Stone, this is my project uh, and I'm actually quite proud of it. The uh, magazines up there that you see, we've airdropped each one of those as individual art pieces to our community. And we do it quite often with no expectations. We actually never told anyone what our project would be because we wanted to surprise everyone. It was the fun of the unexpected. And I think sometimes people give themselves too much rigidity to what they think they have to do. Just do what you want to do and ask, and don't ask for permission, just do it. This is what I was talking about with the King board. Like there's four different sets with different apes now. And my brother is actually on this with me, which is, gives me the biggest chills in the world. Like the fact that I was able to give him his ape, a year later, we're on a chess set together. And a lot of people will say like, why did you give an ape to someone? Well, it's my brother and it's a community. And besides that, it's a token to be in a club. You only need one. And then you grow it, right? Because the whole point is to do that. So there's gonna be times though when you fail and you do big things that hurt real bad, but in hindsight, you don't know it yet. I licensed my ape to, Jason, uh, to G Fuel and uh, the gaming community wasn't quite ready for it yet. So 
I love hearing all of the talks that I've heard so far about where gaming is going to, but I will let you know they're not there yet and they're not nice on the internet. So that actually got canceled, but I really do think it's important to try bigger and bolder things because you never know where it's gonna go and maybe that would have been an amazing opportunity, but it still is because I got to be part of the G Fuel team even if for a week, you know, and, and a lot of people don't try things because they're afraid to fail. I failed in front of 100,000 people and I got up the next day and I kept going. And I think that's the biggest thing for all of you guys to do is when you fail, get back up and keep going and develop your character around something that makes you smile, something that becomes who you are so that when you express it, it is the truest version of yourself. And that's, that's how I've grown my IP. So I, I thank you guys for letting me hang out and talk with you today. And I think that's it, right? All right, thanks so much, guys.